If there's one thing that America is relying on, it is Fluid Master. The fill valves for almost every toilet out there made, Kohler American Standard, many other brands use this and trust this brand to make sure that water isn't running in your home. They just came out with a bidet toilet seat with a heated seat with a remote control. It is awesome. I can't wait to show you how to install this and how simple it really is. This is one tremendous upgrade for your bathroom. All right, so let's show you what's in the box. So everything comes with it, uh, except for the toilet itself. You have to purchase that separately. If you went with Kohler or American Standard, you're gonna have the Fluid Master parts already incorporated into it. So let's go open this up and show you what's in it. We have a little template here. This is used to be able to center your toilet seat easily. It's got all the hardware. So when you open this up, this is, it's really simple because it's just it's gonna to attach to your existing toilet and it's gonna tee off for the water supply to the bidet toilet seat. It also has different adapters for different sized outlets. So if your uh, outlet for your supply line to your existing valve is not the same, you have the adapters for that. You also got the remote control. You can't, you can't use this without a remote control. This is really awesome. It has all the settings on there. We'll go through demonstrating how all of these work, but this is really cool. You'll be able to stick this right next to your vanity and, and have control over it. The mounting bracket, you've got your bolts to your toilet you're gonna to be installing, AAA batteries, everything in here ready to go. So then the actual bidet seat itself, if you were to buy a new toilet and you're gonna buy this, I would definitely recommend a elongated toilet. It's just gonna look better and sit more comfortably. So there's the bidet toilet seat. We'll show you how to install this. This is the most important part of the whole system is having an electrical outlet that you can plug this into. So you're not gonna have to run out and get separate supply lines. So you have one attaches to the, uh, the T and then one that's gonna be attaching to the actual bidet. So you have, this is a really long one actually, 20 inches. I might actually reduce the size of this because I really don't need a 20 inch line with where my existing pipe is. But regardless, it, you have both of them in here so you'll be able to connect the toilet with everything you have there. That's really about it. Other than that, I'm just gonna show you how to install this. It's really simple to put together. And um, yeah, I'm really excited. This is definitely gonna be one great upgrade to your bathroom. So the first step is just to get the bracket. So this has a little rubber gasket on the bottom. So you face this up. And first off, we need to put these rubber grommets down inside of your holes here. Now they do have an, an alternative bolt system in case you don't have round holes like this. Most toilets are gonna have this, American Standard, Kohler, all the basic brands, but they do have a wing nut application that if you had smaller holes for any reason, you can attach that. So if you don't have room for these big grommets, you can just use the system that has the wing nuts on them. So either one will work but most new toilets are gonna to be able to handle these. And just dip these in water. That kind of lubricates it a little bit. And then you just slide them into place. Okay. These two little brackets here. So make sure that this is facing up so it has like a little groove. This is gonna allow the screw head to slide into and be flush. Before we move this around to where we need it, let's just get them kind of slightly screwed into place. This is where the template comes into place. So this is gonna help align this toilet correctly. So you wanna just move this up until it meets the edge of your rim. Kind of makes it easy because then you don't have to guess where the toilet seat has to be. And then you can just even adjust it left or right, back and forth until you have the right same reveal all the way around. Each toilet's gonna to be a little bit different, so this template definitely helps out. And then you can just tighten this down. So look, look down under here, see that the rubber gasket is completely compressed and your brackets in, in place. Let's take this little blue tape off. OK, 
Okay, so this, this is where the bracket's gonna slide into. So one thing to note here is that this little release button right here, this is gonna move and allow you to disengage it off of the actual bracket. So this is gonna slide onto here. Okay, so it kind of clicks. So if you want to take it off, you just press the button. But you want to slide this on until you hear it click. So you can even see, see how that button moved there. So when you slide it on, it clicks right into place. Double check to see how everything fits here. And it is soft closed too, which is cool. Now that we've got that established where it's sitting, now we can go ahead and flip down our connection point. So this has a little rubber grommet on it. And this is where we're gonna thread our 16 inch valve. So this, as long as this has this rubber grommet in there, you can just thread it directly onto here. And it's important not to over tighten this. So just do basically hand tight and maybe a half turn past that. If you over tighten it, you could squeeze this gasket a little too much and cause a problem. But now we have our water supply connected. Now we'll slide it back into place. Clicked into place. All right, and this, this is what really makes it easy is this little T valve. So again, this is just like a regular supply valve to your toilet. So this doesn't require any Teflon tape. You can just thread this on like any regular valve. Okay. So we'll hide this back underneath the here. And then again, go to hand tight and about a half turn or so past hand tight. You don't want to over tighten these grommets and just make sure that this one's tightened. Now it does come with a 20 inch supply line. As you can see, that's like ridiculously tube long. I have another one that is just gonna connect straight to here. So again, this has a little rubber grommet on it. So all I have to do is thread it on like a regular toilet supply. Valve should be checked going in. Make sure that there isn't any leaks. I can simply just plug this in. No. Yep. Okay. So everything's tested. Water's good. Very simple connection. I love the fact that these all have rubber grommets in them, just like the, all the regular connection points. So it really makes it easy install and put on any type of faucet or any type of plumbing situation. Definitely pretty cool. Uh, it's got the light light on it. So you'll be able to see this reflecting. It's obviously pretty light in here, but that's pretty cool. So this is a sensor. So when you're actually sitting on here, first off, I have the, the heated seat already on. So you can adjust the temperature. So if you want it all the way up, there's a seat. You also have the dry uh, heat. You can turn that up as well. So when you use the actual dryer, so there's the warm air to dry thing, dry yourself. But this sensor is when you sit on it, that's what's gonna make it go. So if you just put your hand on it, you can test things. All right, and then we just press the auto button. So it's gonna release a little bit of water. There's the bidet toilet seat, or the bidet itself. Now you can increase the pressure to what you want. You can also adjust the, the position, bringing it back and forth. You can immediately go to gentle, and then it'll release and go. So, and again, you can have your water temperature up too. So this will heat the water. So just trying that again, just go to auto start it and if you want to turn down the pressure go ahead and turn down the pressure 
is the oscillating. There you go. And then again, back to drying. <laughs> very, very cool. This is definitely an awesome upgrade to the bathroom. So check it out, Fluid Masters. Let me know what you think. Really was a straightforward installation, but this is gonna be something that the client's gonna love for years to come. I knew it. I knew you were gonna want one of these on every one of our toilets. Once you have a heated seat, you just don't go back. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we're gonna install this bidet toilet seat in our primary bathroom for you, babe. Thanks, honey. <laughs> so, okay, so the first thing that you have to be aware of is how much wattage this bidet toilet seat uses. So at the max use, now it's not continuous because you're not heating the water all the time. You're only heating the water when you're actually using it and the toilet seat will stay heated the whole time, but the max wattage for this is 1,250 watts. And that's important to know because if you're trying to connect an outlet to your existing circuit, you kind of have to know how much is being used on that circuit in order to add something to it. So 1,250 watts is not a small amount. Most of the time you're gonna want a 20 amp line to do that because a 20 amp line can handle up to 2,400 watts and really to be safe, you wanna stay at 80% of that. So uh, when you're running, most, you know, most outlets or most switches, I should say, uh, as far as for lighting is usually 15 amp. That gives you about 1800 watts to work with. The 20 amp will do 2400, but again, you wanna be within the 18 or 80% of that. So we have a vent fan, we have a shower light, and then we have two light sconces next to the mirror. The fan really only takes about 100 watts. The shower lights may be 15 because it's LED. And then whatever the wattage is on your light bulbs is what you would be calculating. So pretty much under 300 watts is what you'd be using in this bathroom if it, this is not connected to other parts of the home. So you have to be aware of that, that a lot of times when your light switches have power supply there, it's usually connected to other light fixtures as well. Uh, so at 300, that's 1550, that's going above our 80% because the 80% of uh, 1800 watts for the 15 amp line would be 1440. So the 15 amp line is just not gonna work or it shouldn't be an option you really should consider. So we're gonna be using a 20 amp line and we're gonna connect it to our GFI. But keep in mind that the outlet is GFI protected as it is right now. So you don't necessarily have to put, you know, now the, the GFI that we're connecting to there is GFI protected, but it does have its own GFI adaption. So if you just wanted to put a regular outlet in, uh, this is gonna protect it as it works. But you can see how long this cord is. I mean, it's, it's about three feet. So you have plenty ability to plug this in behind the toilet. Now, in the other presentation, we put it on the left-hand side next to where the water supply with the shower door and the way this is configured, it's just too tight. I'm not gonna have any ability to put an outlet there. So we're gonna put it on this side and we're just gonna keep it down below so that's somewhat hidden. And then what we're gonna do is just pay attention to where our studs are before we commit to anything. So we have an out, we have basically have a stud right here and we don't have a stud all the way until we're behind the toilet. So anywhere in here, we're gonna be capable of running a wire through. So this switch is actually just this lighting here, but um, that's not gonna interfere with anything. We're just gonna basically run it off of this outlet. So what I normally do is honestly just cut a little hole in the top of the box and run uh, a fish stick up through here. The game plan is to drill through the top header here and then fish the wire down into our hole here. 
So this is definitely the part that can vary wildly from one home to another. In this particular situation, thankfully, I don't even have any insulation at the ceiling level. I'm able to see all of my wires. So I basically just found all the wires that were going down to the switch boxes and then just drilling through that top header plate. Uh, easier said than done. Uh, in this one, it actually was that simple, but uh, there's a lot of scenarios where it won't be that easy. So these are really helpful. These are little fish sticks and we can run this through this hole here. I'm going to try to try to get it up through the hole, but this is really kind of like a two person job in order to get this up. So when you, when I'm up there, it's going to probably be stuck in the back end of that wall. Yeah. Let me just drill another hole here. All right. Now I'll push it up. All right, you go ahead and start pulling it down. Yeah, go ahead and just go ahead and pull it out. Okay, so now we can go ahead and easily run our wire in here. All right, so one thing about running outlets when you hook it around here, make sure it goes clockwise. So you tighten it with the screw so that it doesn't loosen off of the connection. And it's always black on brass and then the neutral on the silver. But again, just make sure that that hook is facing clockwise. So when you th thread this on there, it's pulling it onto the screw and not pulling it off. get rid of this toilet seat this outdated horribly cold toilet seat <laughs> okay and then this indicator here is facing the front but before we tighten that completely because we want to be able to move this around Okay, we're gonna slide this on first, just to see way, the way it's really gonna look. Okay, there it goes, it clicks in. So you are kind of limited to where this sits. So you can see here, this is butting right up against the tank. That's about as close as you're gonna be able to be. Yeah, you're not gonna to wanna to have it, you're actually gonna to wanna to have like a little bit of space here in between the toilet tank and the things so that when you open your lid, you can actually get it open. So that's gonna to have to be where we're gonna be resting. So now that that's right where we need it, let's tighten this on the rest of the way. And that now it should be intact. So then now we'll flip this out. So this little side port, and then this is your supply line to it. So just go hand tight and then like a half a turn after that. You don't want to do much more than that. It will stick up the side here. And as you can see, you can see that clicking. So this is your release button. So the simple part is just connecting the water supply. So these guys already have uh, the rubber gaskets in them. So you just literally just slide it, you know, thread it onto your toilet flange. Just gonna loop this wire around the back and plug it in. Yeah, 
yeah, pretty awesome. Let me know your thoughts about the bidet toilet seat. If you plan on upgrading yours and put one of these in your home.